Can Pat Robertson prove the Bible is trustworthy? <sighs> yeah, no. No, he can't. Let's not even pretend. Pat is going to fuck it all up, but, you know, hey, we might as well go along for the ride and see why he's always been an absurd example of Christian apologetics. Why has anyone ever paid any attention to this idiot? Well, I'll see you on the other side and we'll find out. I just realized that I've never done a Pat Robertson video. At least, I don't think I have. With as many hundreds of videos as I've done, I guess conceivably I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I never have. So it's time to rectify that in a short video where someone asks Pat a question and Pat completely fails to answer it intelligently. Because really, what's he going to say? He's got bills to pay and sheep to fleece. So here's Pat on the 700 Club answering a question badly. Let's go watch him fail miserably. Yeah, I don't know that I'd believe that any of this is really going to be honest, or maybe honest is the wrong word. How about truthful? How about factual? Because maybe they actually do believe this, and they're expressing their honest, if absurdly false, opinions, but that doesn't really make any of it actually worthwhile. And that's kind of the problem. I expect these answers to be worthwhile. I expect them to be defensible. I actually care if they're true. And when it comes to religion, I seem to be one of the few that actually do. And that's kind of sad, isn't it? This is Jean who says, I have a problem with family members who make fun of the Bible. They keep saying that it's written by man and there's no way that I can prove God had anything to do with it. I would like to know how I should respond to that kind of talk. I would like to be able to say yes, and here is the proof. Too bad you're not going to get that, because your family members are absolutely correct. There is no evidence that God had anything at all to do with the Bible, because there's no evidence that God exists in the first place. That's a matter of faith, not fact. Now, I have no idea where Pat is going to go with this. I really don't. But I can pretty much guarantee that it'll be utterly incoherent. I mean, honestly, what can he do? Redefine evidence to mean something that it clearly doesn't mean? Pretend that there's some evidence out there somewhere when obviously there is none? Or, as I suspect, simply appeal to blind faith and nonsensical knowledge that God is real because you really, really wish that he was. That's pretty much the only way that he can go if he wants to maintain any kind of quote-unquote honesty. Then again, this is Pat Robertson we're talking about here, so honesty isn't really a given. But let's see if I'm right. Well, what you can say is the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there, because holy shit, does Pat look terrible. Now, he's never really looked that great, but this looks like he's dressed up like a zombie for Halloween. I can see him stumbling around looking for brains, and he could probably use some. Now, granted, he is 90, and I'm not going to get on his case for looking that old, but, you know, holy shit, is it time for him to retire? Anyway, this made me think back to the old podcast days when we used to make fun of Pat a lot. Of course, he looks a whole lot worse now than he did back in those days. I mean, take a look. And if you will forgive my use of this uh, expression, hurt the bitch. Well, let me argue with you. It is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. But I want to argue. Don't argue with the Bible. Don't argue head games. Just say it is written. That's the way Jesus dealt with it. 
Yeah, but that doesn't prove anything. This is the appeal to blind faith that I was talking about. What else can he do? Well, the Bible is right because the Bible is right, and you don't have to prove anything to anyone because, you know, the Bible is right. Except how in the hell do you know that? We go right back to those two questions that I always ask the religious. How do you know that? And how have you objectively tested your belief to prove that it's actually so? And they don't bother because they don't care. This is never about the truth and always about feelings. People like Pat they don't care about the facts. They only care about how their beliefs make them feel, whether they're actually emotionally comforting, and, let's be honest, in Pat's case, whether or not they can con people into giving him money. So the last thing you want to do is to start arguing fine points of doctrine with people. Just say, look, I was once blind, now I see. I have met Jesus, I talk to him, I walk with him. And as somebody said, a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a person with an argument, okay? Except that doesn't actually answer the question. So let's go back and take a look at the question that was actually asked, shall we? Jean wanted to know how she could respond to her family who were pointing out inconsistencies in the Bible. Pat says, well, don't respond at all. Well, that's stupid. The lady's family isn't going to stop laughing at her if she can't come up with something intelligent to say in response. And Pat is telling her that there's nothing intelligent to say in response. Stick your fingers in your ears and pretend the questions don't exist. Or maybe, and just hear me out here, maybe you shouldn't listen to this living fossil. Clearly, he's got no clue what the hell he's talking about, as if that's any surprise. But, you might ask me, what do I honestly expect? I mean, clearly, there's something wrong upstairs, and the 700 Club is pushing this decrepit fossil like it's elder abuse. You can't expect him to actually have a clue what he's talking about, can you? I mean, really, how much is actually going on upstairs anymore? How much ever was? That's another question entirely. <laughs> and when we think about it, let's compare the words coming out of his mouth to the things that people like Frank Turek and William Lane Craig and all the rest of the idiot crew have to say. It's really not all that different when you think about it. Believe blindly, ignore detractors, pretend like you were right all along. It's the same message all around. Because, really, what can any of them say? That's the message of Christianity. Believe and don't ask questions. Well, what if the questions are important? No, you shut up and you do what you're told. You're not allowed to ask how you defend your beliefs. There's no defense necessary. You're just automatically right because it makes you feel good. That should be all you need, right? But in the modern world, increasingly, that isn't all people need. People need evidence and a rational defense, and Christianity has none of that to offer. If you want to know one of the reasons so many people are abandoning Christianity, that's it. Christianity has no answers. They only have empty claims. And shysters. <laughs> they have a lot of shysters. So, Gene, run for the hills. Pat has played his hand, and now you can see that it's totally empty. Maybe you should just rethink this whole stupid Christianity nonsense. It's every bit as vapid as Pat Robertson. And if you will forgive my use of this uh, expression, hurt the bitch.